And it looks like we are live. So uh, hello there. I'm Bill McIntosh, your host today. And we're going to be talking about some powerful uses of AI and marketing to build and grow your business. So that's the topic for today. And let me check in and make sure that we are indeed live. So let me know in the chat, pop in there and give me a big hello. Say hello in the chat and let's confirm that I am indeed alive for you there. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, I see Blake here from Dallas, Texas. So we've got one hello, but now I know there's more people here than Blake. Okay, there we go. I see James, I see Troy, awesome, awesome. Uh, there's more coming in now. Okay, great, great. So uh, cool. Well, uh, glad to be here. And of course, these broadcasts are always on a little bit of a delay. So sometimes when I ask questions, and by the time you guys see it and hear it and respond back, there can be a little, sometimes up to a 10 second delay. Now they're really coming in. Okay, awesome, awesome. Aloha, howdy, hello. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad to be here. It's been uh, been, a, been a crazy week. So uh, yeah, looking forward to sharing a little what I've learned. And there's some cool, cool stuff. So uh, we have a bunch of pretty crazy content to share with you. And uh, we're going to be going into a total of five separate traffic and money-making strategies on today's show. Um, some of them use AI. Some of them don't. Most do. And I have some surprises, some pretty cool uh, segment coming up. But uh, to give you some idea of what's ahead, let me look at my show notes. So the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to be talking about how you can actually weaponize your phone and turn it into a business tool that gets you customers and, uh, and traffic. We're going to talk about that first. Uh, also, we're going to be covering... Uh, different ways to write profitable email uh, newsletters. So we've talked about that a little bit in the past. Um, we shared a, a segment about how to actually get paid to build your own newsletter. And now we're going to talk about how do you put content into that newsletter. If you're going to have an email subscriber list and you want to send them a newsletter, well, the big problem is where do you get content and what do you say to them? So we're going to cover that. Uh, and then also on the agenda is something a lot of people have requested. And that is how do you profit with a faceless YouTube channel? So how could you actually use YouTube to generate profit either through the YouTube partner program or as a tool to drive traffic to your own business and sell your own products and services? And a lot of people are a little shy. They don't like coming on camera like I come on camera, I don't mind, but that's not for everyone. And some people don't want to have to jump on camera and be the personality behind their social media or their YouTube brand. So we're gonna show you how to do that without showing your face and we can take it to the extreme and you don't even have to use your own voice and I'll explain how all that will work. And that's a very lucrative strategy. And then the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to sell without ever having a product. And I'm gonna show you five examples of companies that started selling basically their product either didn't exist or was total garbage. And now they are billion dollar companies. So we're gonna get into how you can bring dollars in the door even before you have a product or even if your product is low quality at the beginning, how do you transform that into a successful business? And then the final segment today, we're gonna to be talking about, oh, where is that? No, it's not in my show notes. Um, Okay, well, it's in, my, it's in my teleprompter, so we'll get to it. A mystery segment that uh, we're going to be covering in uh, at the end on segment number five. And let's see here if we are cleared to go. All right. Awesome. We are set to go. And let's get my teleprompter rolling and get started. So with this segment, we're going to be talking about the newest AI content writing hack. This is how you can weaponize your phone and turn it into your strongest weapon when it comes to generating content and generating traffic and interest. So this is a method for writing AI content that I haven't seen anyone talk about. And all you need is a phone and a physical book. That's right. Your phone. I'm going to get my phone. 
your phone and a book, and that's all you need to turn into a content generation factory, to be able to create content, to use in your blog, to use all over the place, to use in email newsletters, videos, social media content, anywhere you might think, these two tools, and you are there. And I'll show you how to do it. It's quite cool. It's actually a, a fairly recent update um, with uh, the technology on there. And you could take your phone and literally go to the library or a bookstore and end up with a mountain of content that simple. And in my opinion, this is the best method right now for people that are trying to generate AI written content for their online brand. You could use this strategy and within 10 minutes, you could have really, really quality content for blogging, for Twitter and all of your social media stuff. The possibilities here are really endless. So let's talk about how you do it. So step one, you find a book. So for this, I'm selecting right there, Felix Dennis, How to Make Money. I think that's a topic a lot of people want to know about. Good book, by the way, if you, if you haven't read it. Um, so you find a book that your audience would find interesting. And in my case, I serve entrepreneurs and people that want to generate either build businesses or build, make their current business grow and become bigger. And that's all about money, right? It's how to get money. And so you find a part of the book that your audience would be very particularly interested in. So you just kind of skim through the book, looking through the chapters and find a section you think your audience would be uh, interested in. And then all you're gonna do is take a picture of that page. And you could use your iPhone or you could use your Android phone. And uh, let me show you how it works. So here we have, uh, so we have this page here I've selected. This is uh, chapter 11 and it's talking about common barriers um, to, uh, uh, to people being successful and making money. So you take your phone, you put it in camera mode. See, there's camera mode right there. I'm just gonna simply take a picture. And what's interesting is you'll see four little, these four little, uh, uh, little corner brackets around the text that I just took a picture of when you're taking your picture. And this works on more recent versions of uh, iPhone or Android phones, both. And then you pull up the picture. So we got to see that, we got the picture of the book, but check this out and hopefully the camera can capture it. If I put my finger and hold it, yeah, I can highlight the whole thing. You See that? So it's actually highlighting the text, if you can see that. So from a picture, it has recognized all of the text and I can now copy it. See right there, I can say copy. Now I can open up ChatGPT. So here, let me open up my ChatGPT app. So I'm opening up ChatGPT. And now I can paste it into ChatGPT and talk to the AI to get it to take that content and turn it into something really really super valuable. So in this case, I, I don't have my phone hooked up to share my screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the text, I've got it on my computer here and I'm gonna demo it for you on screen. So let me share, set up my screen share. And me pull that around here and get rid of that and share my screen. There we go. And here is ChatGPT. Okay, so we're going to head over to ChatGPT, which is just at chat.openai.com. And we're going to go here to GTP4 in the default version. That's the best version. And you, you'll have that if you're on one of their paid plans. It's about 20 bucks a month but you can also use their free and use 3.5. That's also pretty darn good. So what we're going to do is we're gonna come over here and I have a prompt. Um, so I'm gonna take this prompt and I'm gonna put it in the chat GPT. And a prompt really is just, you know, what do you say to the AI to get it to do what you want, okay? That's the simplicity of it. So I have this prompt here and let's actually do some spell checking. And uh, we're going to send this in and we're saying, I'm going to post an excerpt from a quote and I put the book title, How to Make Money by Felix Dennis. 
I want you to act as an expert business blogger and copywriter and analyze the transcript and produce a blog post between 500 and 700 words. So you could also say produce a social media post, produce a video script, um, and any other kind of content you wanted. And then here you say what it's, it's targeted for. The content is targeted to entrepreneurs and small business owners. And then you asked, do you understand the task? And we send it. Absolutely, I understand the task. Please share the excerpt, okay? So now we're gonna take what we copy, what we got out of our camera. So we copy and paste it from our camera and we're now gonna paste it in here, hit submit and let the AI go to work. Here we go. So now, again, this is not like stealing or copying or somehow plagiarizing the content. What it's actually doing is it's giving commentary now on his article and giving him full credit, right? So I love that. Embrace failure to taste success. If you're willing to fail, sometimes publicly and even catastrophically, you will never be rich. Takeaway is to embrace failure, right? Pretty darn good. Look at this. They're taking quotes, little bits of pieces out of this. And this is producing an awesome piece of content, right? And again, this is not about plagiarism or stealing content or trying to trick someone into thinking it's your content. See it right there. And it says right here, it's quoting him. In conclusion, Felix Dennis is straightforward philosophy, right? But I don't have to be the guy taking credit for this. I just want to share great information with my audience, right? So would you guys appreciate that? Would you appreciate that content? It's pretty good. Actually, I enjoy reading it. I'm going to go back and reread it. It's pretty enjoyable. So it's taken a core piece of information, some valuable information that the author wrote, and it's giving quotes and commentary and full credit to the author, but it's also providing great value. So I could take that, whether I put it in my email newsletters or whether I put it on my blog posts or any of the other places that I might want to use that. And all you have to do, like if you're like, there's a lot of, lot of people that are just starting their businesses that are not really up to technology yet. Right. And they're not, you're not really up to using a lot of the online tools for generating content. And it's a little bit overwhelming. Well, here it, it you saw how simple that was, right? All I did was get my phone and take a picture, right? That's it. Now, the prompt I used, you saw it on screen, but for those of you who are paying members of Push Button AI, I will be putting this in your members area. We will be adding this to your training and you will get a copy of that prompt that I used for this um, and uh, also a transcript of today's broadcast. And so that's for our paying Push Button AI members. And uh, that's something that we're doing a little extra for all of you. So I'll, I'll share that all with you in your members area. And um, uh, and that works pretty good. So now you can also be a little clever about how you engineer your prompts, right? On what your prompts are, what you tell the AI to do, the chat GPT to do. And those of you who also are in our program know you've probably taken my advanced prompt engineering class and it all talks about a very specific and very clever way to craft prompts. And so now you can use these quotes that you get from books and turn them into content for just about any occasion that you might think of. That would be great content that could be used for a video, for example. If I want to do a short form video, right? Could you just use that right there? Just maybe with a slightly different prompt to have it phrase it in the form of a YouTube video script, right? I could have put that as quotes and different things in social media. There's a lot of uses. So you can paraphrase the text, summarize it, reword it. You know, you can actually even uh, tell the chat GPT what kind of a voice to put it in, what kind of audience is appreciating this. Do you want it simplified? Do you want it, you know, comparisons? There's a lot, the, like the sky is the limit when it comes to what you can do with this particular strategies, okay? And uh, I've shared the, again, I'll share the prompt with all of the paying members. And uh, it's a great way to be adding content to your business. And now, you can play around with this, right? So you should actually play around with it and see what you can do with this. And uh, again, <laughs> I mean, it's a little funny, you, but you could go to the bookstore, right? And just wander around in the bookstore taking pictures of pages. And uh, you wouldn't even have to buy, <laughs> buy the books. That's a, 
a funny thing to say, but you know, without even having to buy the books, wander around in Barnes and Noble or your local library, and you now have a gold mine of potential content. And, uh, and that is useful in any niche that, that has books, right? Anything that has books or magazines or publications that you could hold in your hand can be used for this strategy. Pretty cool, right? Uh, awesome. And here, I'm going to power up with a little bit of uh, content juice here. It has been a very long day. And I uh, got to actually recharge the batteries. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, then we're going to move on to the next segment in just a moment. But uh, uh, I also want to remind everybody that we have Push Button AI is our brand new product. It is in pre-release. It's actually not released to the public. And uh, if you're not yet a Push Button AI member, um, you have to go through an interview process. We're not allowing everyone in at this point. And so to do that, you can head over to pushbutton.ai. That's just pushbutton.ai and set up an appointment. To, they'll, give a, they'll do a live demo of the technology for you and you'll be blown away because push button AI actually can build your entire business for you from the click of a mouse. It can do things like coach you on, if you're not sure what niche market you wanna go into, well, there's an intelligent AI that literally tells you what niche market it advises you to go into. It'll ask you a series of questions, you give it your answers, and it's going to coach you through the process of how to pick your niche market. It's our AI niche coach. That's how it starts. Now, maybe you already know what market you are in, or maybe you even already have an existing business. So the next thing Push Button AI can do for you is build an entire training course business for you. What does that mean? So it will create a 12 module course on any topic that you can imagine. It will guide you through the process. It will help you pick what problems and goals that your audience has, that your niche market is in. It will help you organize what should be in your module, step by step, module by module. It'll actually do all of that for you while you watch. And then you, when you approve it, it'll take off and it will actually go find you an amazing domain name. It is it's better than me when it comes to going and finding domain names. It's beat me several times when we're setting up new businesses, I turn the AI loose. It finds me an awesome domain name. Of course, you get to approve it. And then, boom, it sets up your website. It sets up your hosting. It installs a shopping cart. It installs a learning management system, a subscription login management system. And it sets up everything that you could need to run a full business. So it writes 12 modules of a training course. It creates your sales letter. It writes it for you. It creates a free report that you can give away to get subscribers on your mailing list. It builds your squeeze page, you know, the page that people fill out to join your mailing list. It writes that, builds that, puts it online. It creates a logo for you. It creates 12 modules of video training, audiobook training. It writes a 30-day email sequence that you can load up in your autoresponder and follow up with every person who joins your mailing list all done for you. And that's not it. It also creates your social media posts. It creates your ads. If you're going to do ads out of the, uh, like on Facebook or Twitter or other advertising platforms. And all you have to do is push a button and approve the process. And it sets all of that up, launches your website and hands you the key. So pretty darn cool. If that's something you're interested in, we do have an early access program. You can check it out at pushbutton.ai and learn all about what it does and how it works. So uh, on that uh, little commercial, we'll go on to the next segment. And I know we have several of our Push Button AI customers here, by the way. Who here has gotten a good course out of Push Button AI? I'm curious in the chat if anybody here has gotten something good. Um, I was just looking through some of the customer courses that were created recently. There's some really good stuff in a wide variety of different niche markets. So it is pretty darn awesome. All right. Now we're going to move on to the very next segment. And let me get prepared. Okay. Let's see.
There we go. Okay, just getting my setup going. Okay, and we got that. Okay. And that, okay, good. Fantastic. Uh, and then of course, okay, it looks like Sarah got a good course out of it. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, James has three courses. Tracy says, mine's fantastic. Uh, Thomas says, or no, that's to hump to says I have gotten a few. Awesome. Good. Good. Glad to see that, uh, we've got a couple of our, our customers here and getting some good stuff out of the AI. Um, and, uh, let's now start the next segment. And I have a lot of stuff going on over here on my desk. So I'm trying to ignore the noise of everyone trying to reach me while I'm live, but <laughs> so, uh, here we go. So now we're going to talk about how to make eight figures from email. And specifically, we're going to get into five ways that you can write profitable newsletters. Now, over the past few years, I've made tens of millions of dollars in my businesses using email. Now, you'll often hear me talking about affiliate marketing a lot around here as well. And in my experience, affiliate marketing is at its best when you combine it with email. And you can use the strategies we're going to talk about today to make money with affiliate marketing or to promote your own business if you have a business that you're trying to get off the ground. Now, by the way, if you're not sure how to build a subscriber list in the first place, got you covered. Last week, I showed you how to get paid to build your list in a previous video. I'll link to it in the description so you can watch it after we're done here. So I'll link that in the description and you guys can take a look You'll also see it in my AI playlist. You'll find out how you can actually build an email subscriber list and get paid to do it. So check for that link in the description. Check that out after this video. Um, but there are people that are absolutely killing it in the newsletter space right now by promoting offers in their email newsletter. So what they do is they create an email newsletter that has content and value in it, and then they pepper it full of different kinds of affiliate offers. And what I'd like to do before we get into how you do this, I wanna show you four examples that look like they're doing over a million in sales each. Each one doing a million in sales. That's our estimate from our evaluations of those businesses and some case studies. Uh, but I'd like to show you some examples, okay? So let's take a look. And we'll go back to screen sharing again. And then let me pull the browser around. Okay, so here's one of them right here. This is contrary in thinking. So free your mind and build your bank account. Okay, so this is a financial sort of um, uh, aggressive kind of a, a lifestyle and financial newsletter. We've got here the Newsette, which is uh, targeting women. News from beauty to business and beyond, plus an inspiring interview delivered to a cheat with a tweet duh, with a cheeky twist to your inbox every single day um, for free, right? So there's another email newsletter. Here's another one. This is a internet business. So this is in the same niche market I'm in, building, monetizing, and growing internet businesses. And then here we have the skim, the morning million, the morning newsletter that millions wake up to. Um, and this is kind of a general news, uh, maybe a little bit of pop culture and general news, kind of a news letter. Pretty cool, right? Now, the problem, the problem that most people run into is that they just don't know how to come up with the content for their newsletter. So either they don't know what niche market to go into, which that's where push button AI's niche coaching can come in, where the AI can coach you on what niche you should build your newsletter in. But if you know what your newsletter should be in, what niche, what topic is it gonna be about, the next thing that you have to solve is how are you gonna get the content to fill that newsletter? Because there are a lot of different ways to get content, some of them not so good, some of them that can get you in trouble and others that are really darn awesome. So I'm going to show you five ways to come up with and produce content for a newsletter. This is an email newsletter that you send to your subscribers 
so that you can be the next eight-figure email empire owner, just like those guys, right? So we're going to talk about several methods to do it. Now, the first one is borrowed UGC. Anybody here know what UGC stands for? Uh, you know, put it in the comments. So I'll give you a moment. We'll see if you get it right. It's a quiz. Put it in and let's see if you got it right. It's user generated content. Now it means any kind of content created and shared by users or consumers of any brand, any company, any, you know, anybody, anybody anywhere. And there's a, a lot of user generated content all over the web. Okay. But maybe you don't have a brand where you have a lot of people giving you content, right? Maybe you're not established enough yet where people are sharing and, and commenting and commenting and videoing on your brand. That's okay. Borrow someone else's. <laughs> so this is also known as content curation, where you collect content from around the web and you share the important info with your audience. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should be plagiarizing or stealing content and presenting it as your own, but you can utilize other brands' content and other content you can find on the web and present it in a cool way where you're showing excerpts or uh, uh, the important bits about it, commentary about it, um, uh, but largely it's coming from the other brand with full credit. And when you do it that way, that's the cool way of doing it, not the nasty way of plagiarizing and stealing content. I don't want you to do that. that that'd be bad. So to get started, you're going to find communities in your niche. So whatever niche market you have chosen to go into, you're going to find communities online where people are talking about things or discussing your topic. And there's a lot of them and they're easy to find. We'll go over some examples in a minute. So what you're going to do is you're going to react to the, the, the content that you find out on the web. You're going to comment on it. You're going to respond to it or just repost segments of it quoted, you know, with full credit, you know, build, be very transparent about it. Now, so I want to give you some examples of this kind of user generated content or brand generated content. So first debates. So you see comment threads where people are debating tactics or strategies. You're probably on Reddit. You've seen that, right? Anybody here ever seen on Reddit where people are debating different methods? Who here has been on Reddit, by the way? Reddit.com is a place where there are lots of communities in all kinds, thousands of different niche markets. And often you will find them in there, you know, bickering, debating, arguing about the best way to do things or the best things. You know, I think the best camera is this. No, the best camera is this other one. And they go through debates about it. But you can take content out of that and share it on your newsletter with your audience. Also, news headlines, blog posts. Again, be transparent the way you're getting it from. You might find pieces of a podcast, for example, or interviews. I see this done a lot where people will they'll take a podcast where there's a, a brilliant guest uh, or an expert that is uh, you know talking on the podcast in the interview, and they take a segment of that quote them, reuse it, maybe even show video to it, but you can just use their podcast materials, transcribe it. You can throw it into a tool like otter.ai and transcribe the podcast and then grab a segment out and quote it in your newsletter. So you can find content in Facebook groups, right? There's millions of Facebook groups, subreddits. Quora is another place to go for, for content like this. Discord, who's here on, who's on Discord, by the way, I am. I'm in like way too many Discord servers that I, I can't even keep up with it all anymore, but they are loaded with valuable content in those dis discussion uh, groups inside of the Discord servers. Um, they usually have channels in there dedicated to discussions. So that's a great place to also pull this content. And there are niche areas of the internet all over like niche apps or forums. Now, an example is, a, is a, an app called Fishbowl. It's an app for corporate pro professionals, right? So people that are trying to get kind of corporate jobs and finance jobs and things like th that. And right now, lots of people are using that app and taking screenshots. Just, you know, go to the app on your phone, open up the app and screenshot it. That's it. And if you do that, you can then share it with your audience in your newsletter, and uh, it can be incredibly valuable. And you don't even have to add anything else. And people love this kind of content. Now, let me show you some examples of the Fishbowl app so you can see what I'm talking about here, all right? So let's go back to the screen. 
and let's go on to my next one here. So here's Fishbowl. So you can see here, uh, this again is in the, the business and kind of corporate job kind of niche. And you can see here that there's some useful content. How do you deal with managing multiple priorities and timelines? I can never seem to make everyone happy no matter how much I work. And then here's a great little bit of content that you can quote. Here's another Fishbowl link here. And uh, talking about, um, um, you know, the, being a, a good in the workplace, but and also juggling the hat of being a, a, a good, you know, a mom at the same time. And so those kinds of discussions are filled with awesome content and a screenshot of it that you share with your newsletter can be incredibly valuable. So whether you're taking the text, video, screenshots, all of these things are sort of meat to, of content that your audience would really, really love. And if you're someone who has trouble like being able to like, it's like writer's block where you can't originate, you're thinking, okay, what do I write about? And you get into that writer's block mode where you just can't figure it out. This is a fantastic way to get that creative process started. And after you've been using this user-generated content strategy for a little while, you'll find that your own creative juices kind of begin to flow and you can uh, uh, create more and more of your own original content as time goes on. But um, it, it's pretty darn good. And then uh, what I do want to cover here is another bonus strategy. So you can also use ChatGPT here. So you've seen in some of my other trainings where I use ChatGPT where you can ask it to summarize or quote or add value or commentary from the user-generated content that you have used. And uh, it can also provide a lot of additional value with minimal effort put into it. Now, let's get into the next method of getting content for your newsletter. Now, you can spy on your competitors and then repurpose what you see them doing. And now, this is a little sneaky, but here's what you do. Um, it's just in, get inspiration from others. So all you got to do is go out and find other newsletters in your niche market. After all, what better way to write winning content than to become inspired by those that are already winning? There are lots of people that already have businesses and newsletters and things in your niche market. So why not use that for inspiration? If they're winning, they must be doing something right. So we can spy on them and see what they do. So here's what you're gonna wanna do. Just go create a dummy email address. Go grab a Gmail address or Heck, you can do Yahoo. I think AOL even offers email addresses, right? For those of you who remember AOL email. So create a dummy email address somewhere and uh, then just go out and subscribe. But you wanna subscribe to at least a dozen other newsletters that are related to your niche market. Go on Google, do some Google foo, right? just type in clever searches, you know, you know, blogs in my niche or newsletters in my niche and find other ones out there subscribe to them. You want to subscribe to those that look like they're being successful. Now, you'll have a daily stream of content ideas flowing right into your inbox, okay? So that is a way, now content is going to be sent to you. Now, I'm not saying that you just go and copy and paste that into your newsletter, but that is a great way to get inspiration for what to talk about. Now, you could combine this with the user-generated content idea and quote it if you wanted to, and give them credit, why not? You know, If they're already winning in your space, why not make a friend out of them? Quote them and give them some, uh, some respect, some props for uh, the content that they created. So you can find compelling content. Just look at what is the most compelling pieces of content each day that come into your inbox, set them aside, and that becomes your pool of ideas that you can go back to. And you can paste it into ChatGPT, like you saw me do earlier um, in some of my earlier training, and just ask it to rewrite it, ask it to come up with a, a unique and better way to say it, ask it to give commentary, ask it to make something original inspired by that newsletter content. And ChatGPT will go to work and help you create content for your very own newsletter. Cool, right? Now, I'm not done, we have several other methods. Method three, summarize long form video content. Now, people are busy, right? Can you relate? I know I can. They see a two hour long interview. Even if I'm on YouTube, let's say, I'm browsing around and then looking at content and I see something that maybe it's even from somebody who I really respect and would love to hear their opinions, but it's a two hour long podcast. I don't have time to sit and watch 
a two hour long podcast. So why not take that content? It's quite easy to get a transcript and then summarize it for your users. Again, not stealing it or plagiarizing it, giving full credit to where it comes from and quoting it or summarizing it or commentary on it. That's a great place to come up with content ideas. So you can help your audience out because they not now they don't have to watch the two hour long interview. You're going to summarize it using ChatGPT. You just summarize that two hour long interview in ChatGPT. I'm gonna show you how in a second and it becomes really, really easy to help your subscribers. And at the same time, you're giving the content, the original content that you got, you know, credit for that as well. And it becomes very easy with the help of AI. So the first thing you're going to do is transcribe that episode. There are tons of tools out there that help you do this. Hugging Face has some, some stuff you can use there to transcribe. Otter.ai is another one that you can use. And then there's another one called Assembly.ai. There's one called Descript. There's like an endless sea of things that will transcribe video. So you're going to want to do that. And here, let's take a look. I'm going to go look here on the screen. And I think I have some stuff to show you. Okay, here's some example of these different tools. So here's assembly.ai. So you can uh, use uh, it to transcribe a YouTube video link right there. Here's a, a hugging face space here that will also do transcription. There's otter.ai, which I love this tool. It's pretty darn cool. And oh, getting ahead of myself. <laughs> and all of these tools will transcribe long YouTube content. And, uh, and then you can take that content and you just head right over to chat GPT, start a new chat and uh, go to GTP4 and say, you know, here's a here is a YouTube video and give them a big chunk of it and then ask it to transcribe it. That's it. So I could say, I won't, I won't get into the prompt right now. So here, here's what we're going to do. So the prompt will be really simple to write. You say, act as an expert in, and then you're a niche market. And I'm going to give you a, an excerpt from a interview of this person about this topic. Um, please, once I give it to you, transcribe it. Do you understand this? And then you send that and it's going to say, yes, I understand. Where's the, you know, where's the transcript? You paste the transcript in, and then away you go. It's going to then summarize it for you so you can use it in your email newsletter. All right, cool. Now, it's getting hot in here. I think I'm going to have to take a break and uh, put the AC on. Which, by the way, producer Nick, I think you're still out here. Uh, if you can turn the AC... Turn it, crank it way down. It's getting very hot in my office. So turning on the AC is going to be very, very helpful to me. So producer Nick, I hopefully you hear me and you can go hit the AC and turn it up full blast. <laughs> uh, it's a, kind of a hot day day. So here with the, the door closed and the lights on and no AC on, it gets really, really hot in here. Okay. So a uh, little break there. So note for editor, you'll obviously want to cut that out when we redo this video and then we will get back to it. Now, depending upon how long that content is, you might have to break it into pieces because you know there, there are limits to chat GPT, how much you can paste in there, but it, this is still very, very useful. So you can take, you know, a chunk of it, the beginning segment, the ending, the middle, whatever piece you want to take and just do a piece at a time. Or you can try to put the whole thing in in chunks and get it to, to summarize that for you. But now you've got a really valuable summary of great content that your audience just doesn't have the time to sit and you know spend to go through. Now, one more method. We call this borrowing brains. <laughs> so... If you're having trouble coming up with things to get uh, to, to write about in your topic, why not get someone else to do it for you? And this is where there are lots of people out there that are trying to promote their own businesses and trying to establish themselves as experts and authorities and opinion leaders in their market. And you can actually get them to just do interviews. You could just 
Do a phone interview. It doesn't even have to be official thing on video. You could even do a text interview, sending them a list of questions. And this could be turned into content. I have used this strategy myself. I know it works really, really well. And if you're having trouble coming up with uh, uh, stuff to do, you just get the guest to write it for you by doing a quick and simple interview. And um, the uh, at the beginning, when your subscriber list is still kind of small, it is harder to get people to, to uh, sign up. But the bigger your subscriber list gets, the easier and easier and easier it gets to get people to interview. Um, and even if you're small, just starting out, it's still not impossible to get guests. I know it because I've launched products from zero all the way up to something that is established and selling. And I've done it through interviews to get content from experts that I can then use. Now, here's how you do it. You find opinion leaders in your space. Now, they don't have to be newsletter owners. They can be YouTubers, people on Twitter with some authority. Um, you can even find you know, people with clout in different communities, Facebook page owners. It can be just about anyone that has the, the, the authority of an expert that knows a little something about your niche market. It does not have to be other newsletter owners. And then you send a polite, cold email to them. You just go look them up on their website, look in their social media about section, and you find their email address send them a polite email and ask if they'd be interested in being um, a guest in your newsletter. Now, this works best if you have some specific questions in mind. So you wanna think about what questions you might wanna ask them instead of making it open-ended and too vague, right? Now, some people are gonna say no, no, right? They'll just say, no, I don't have time. Or some people may ignore you, totally fine. Just send more emails. So you just keep emailing until you get a yes. And you will. I know it because I have done this. This is a numbers game. So you're going to send out multiple emails until you get a yes. And then you can get a guest expert to write content for you when you send them a, a written set of questions and ask them if they want to be a, a guest expert in your newsletter. Now, again, the bigger your newsletter gets, the easier this will be. You can also use LinkedIn for this, by the way. So you can find people that are content experts on LinkedIn, and often they will agree to be a guest expert in your newsletter too. And LinkedIn is cool because you can look for people who have very specific traits. So if you're trying to find an expert in how to be a sales manager, you can search that on LinkedIn and find those people and invite them to be a, a, a guest expert. You can look at the alumni of a specific college maybe that you went to, maybe somebody that you have something in common with, a, a school that you went to, and uh, or maybe you're part of a professionals group. So you can use those also for techniques to find guest experts. And people are far more likely to talk to you if you've got something in common with them. So uh, whatever that might be, same college, same professional group, same hometown, or even just because you're in the same niche market, that is even enough. And uh, basically you're gonna ask for a virtual like coffee chat, right, on, or a phone call, and then ask permission to write about it in your newsletter. And now if you're really struggling with this and you have a little bit of a budget, instead you can do paid introductions and you can get guests for free, but with a little bit of money, you can supercharge this and make it go way faster. Now, as an example, this is kind of an over the top example. Some of you may know Alex Hormozy. Well, he paid another expert, Grant Cardone, 120 grand, that's right, six figures for four hours of Grant's time. And they did it over a Zoom call. And he got advice, like he got the consulting and the advice that he needed from Grant, but he also used that time for content for his subscribers. And I watched him get amazing leverage and amazing value out of that investment. Now, you don't have to go crazy and spend six figures like Alex did, but, uh, but you can still make this work. And there's a place, there's several sites out there. One of them is called intro.co. Intro.co allows you to pay 50 bucks, and you can spend a little more, you can spend up to a grand on the high end, and it gets you a call with an expert. So you can ask them strategic questions and turn it into content. Now, you do wanna tell them what you're doing and get permission, but that's easy. I have found that that is usually not a problem. So the site gives you access to find superstars in your niche if you're willing to invest a little bit of money. So that's the fast way to do it. If you want the shortcut, you don't want to have to time, spend time sending lots of emails. Just go to a site like Intro, and there are many others out there that allow you to talk to experts in your field. And uh, you just pay a fee 
and they'll do an interview with you on the phone. Now, billion dollar company founders are on there, right? The founder of Reddit is on there. The founder of Zillow, if you're familiar with Zillow, the real estate um, site, uh, they're on places like this and you can literally just pay money to get them on the phone. It's, pretty, it's a really clever strategy. So if you're strategic with how you use the time, you can spend you know, 50 to $100 and easily 10X that investment from the content and the value that you'll get out of that, okay? So now we have a fifth and final method of how to get newsletter content, and that's have a back and forth with ChatGPT. You can actually pull up ChatGPT and it will brainstorm with you. It'll act like, you know, your business associate sitting across the desk from you. And you can literally have a nice little conversation and brainstorm with it if you don't know what topics to cover. It'll help you figure it out. First, you just give it a sentence or two about what your newsletter is about, and then you ask it some questions. Now, the more creative you get with your prompts that you actually ask it, it will feed you ideas for what to write about in your newsletters, right? Some example prompts you might be, what are some unique tips or hacks related to your niche that we can share with our subscribers, right? That's one. Can you provide any insights or predictions about the future of our industry that we can discuss with our newsletter? What are some frequently asked questions or common challenges our customers face that we could address in our newsletter? And ChatGPT will literally brainstorm with you and help you figure out what to talk about in your newsletter. And I'll pull some up. We'll do an example of this right now live, okay? So um, I think what I'll do is I'm gonna pick um, one of my businesses and we'll brainstorm with ChatGPT while you watch and see how, what kind of suggestions that it makes for us. Okay, so let me do the screen share again. And uh, let me go here. And I'll grab one of my prompts. I will share all these prompts with our paid uh, um, push button AI customers. So if you're a customer of pushbutton.ai, I will share all these prompts with you in your members area. And so we would start out and we would say, I have a news letter about marketing and building a business online. And then I'll do a space, I'm gonna paste my prompt in. What are some unique tips or hacks related to our niche that we can share with our subscribers? And here it goes. So if you're watching this, tell me if these are good content ideas. Would you like to, because you're obviously somebody who wants to build and grow an online business. So would you like to hear about unconventional search engine strategies, you know, search engine optimization strategies to rank on Google and Bing and other search engines? Um, how to gamify your marketing, which means using the psychology of games and winning, including quizzes, reward programs, loyalty programs, or full-fledged games in your marketing, how to partner with micro influencers to get traffic and sales, how to use AI and machine learning. I think you might want to know about that. Um, some new visual search options that you could use to generate traffic, live video marketing, how to personalize your marketing to address unique, uh, uh, uniquely to each person that you're talking with. Um, neuro marketing. Wow, that's an interesting one. I'm intrigued by just the word. Dive deeper into your customer's buying psyche. So it's all about like mind psychology to uh, how do you use clever sales psychology and behavioral psychology to uh, to get them uh, to, to uh, respond. And then we got podcasting. So those are some examples, right? So another thing we could do is here's another one of our prompts. So now, now that we're talking with it, and we've, it knows about our newsletter, we can just ask, what are some frequently asked questions or common challenges our customers face that we can address in our newsletter? And it's gonna give me some more ideas. How to understand search engine optimization, how to do social media marketing, how to create content, how to do email marketing. And it's telling me about challenges everyone is facing in these things, how to keep up with digital marketing trends. This one is tough. The world of AI especially has made this crazy because it seems like every week there's a new breakthrough that you have to keep up with. 
right? So all of these are telling me challenges that people are facing in their businesses. And then obviously, let's say I, that I, this comes back and I think maybe these aren't quite right. Maybe it doesn't quite understand my audience. And uh, I'll say, can you give me more, come, but make them simpler for newer online business owners? Boom. Now it's going to actually tailor it to be towards a newer audience. So I could have also said, could you tailor it and make it more sophisticated? Could you make it simpler? You know, could you talk about one particular topic or one particular subject more? And it's just going to be an endless waterfall of ideas for content. Isn't that cool? All right, here we go. So that is a enormous amount of ways that you could be generating content for a newsletter. And it doesn't stop with a newsletter because you could use these strategies to create content for just about anything, blog posts, social media content, and lots of other things too. But I like to focus in on newsletters. And so remember, I did a video, it's about a 10 minute video that teaches you step-by-step -step how to get paid to build your own subscriber list. I'll link to that in the description. Uh, and I'll share that with you so you can watch that video next. Because after all, you need to build a subscriber list before you can start sending newsletter emails to them. And why not do it and get paid to build your own newsletter? So check that video out and you'll see it uh, in our playlist as well here on my channel. So again, I'll remind you at this point that if you haven't yet subscribed, what the heck, man? Subscribe. <laughs> it's down there. Just click that subscribe button and sign up and give this video a big old thumbs up as well if you're getting value out of it. And uh, and then, of course, I'll see you in the next video as we continue on. All right. So let's do this now. I'm going to move on to our next segment, which, by the way, I don't know if you guys realize this. I use these live shows with you to be able to get live interaction and questions from you. And I also take your requests all throughout the week from my customers. And that's what guides our content. So for you as one of my customers, if there are topics that you want me to cover, you just submit them through our help desk. You can send them to at, you know, help at pushbutton.ai and give me ideas for what you want me to cover on these sessions. Or if you have specific questions and you need strategy, tactic, you know, problem solving, that kind of help, coaching, I can also do that with, do with you on these live sessions. So you can submit those um, ahead of time all throughout the week. And then every Wednesday, I'm here live with you at 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, that's, I think, 5 p.m. Eastern. And I can give you coaching and tailored advice um, on that. But what we do is we take these segments and we edit them down. And we're using those as content, both for free content to the public, but also for paid content for our members. So we're doing special things where we're taking these segments, we're transcribing them, we're giving downloadable guides that come along with them, any prompts or other things I'm using, links and references, all of that stuff is available to you as one of our paid customers. Um, and we break them into these segments, if, you uh, if those of you who haven't figured this out, so that we can edit them into nice little chunks of really useful content, right? Makes sense. Now, <clears throat> so what we're gonna do now is cover another uh, very frequently uh, requested topic. And I'm gonna get onto that in just a moment. Let me just get my links all sorted out here. Okay. There we go. All right, I was getting prepared for the next segment. Awesome, awesome. Which by the way, those of you who are here with me live, how are you liking the content I've been delivering so far? I think we've done, we've, this is our, our technically our third episode of doing these live sessions in this new format. Um, and I've been covering a lot of different topics and doing stuff that's quite a bit different than my normal live, you know, members only content. But I'm curious, the idea was to pack lots more value into these sessions. So I'm hoping that that is the case. Um, let me know. Uh, give me some feedback if whether it's, um, you know, maybe you want to give me some suggestions as to uh, uh, I could do differently than what we've been doing or something to improve on what we're doing. 
Um, but also, if you're getting value out of these and you're learning some cool stuff and it's worth you tuning in and spending time, let me know about that too. And of course, we're going to be adjusting and adapting this new format uh, as we go. Um, cool. So uh, today, it looks like today we're going to go long. I have a bonus segment today, and we're probably going to definitely go over the hour mark. We're five minutes approaching the hour. So today is going to be kind of a longer show. Um, so those of you who want to hang around with me, we're going to, we have, uh, uh, I have uh, three more segments to do with you. Three more segments of some pretty awesome content. Okay. Ah, Hey, so I'll use this new feature here. I'll show off some of your, some of your feedback. <laughs> so we got thumbs up. I'm loving it. Learning a ton. We got superb content, helpful stuff. Then we go valuable. <laughs> Awesome. See, there's great content and consistent time each week. Okay. Awesome. 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 And then someone who's not getting our emails announcing it. So um, if you're not getting our email announcements and you're a push button AI customer, get in touch with support. They'll, they'll see if they can debug that for you. Sometimes our announcement emails head into your spam folder. So definitely check there first and unspam them. Uh, um, so that you can uh, make sure they show up in your inbox. But um, uh, but if, yeah, if they're still not in your junk or your spam folder, definitely reach out to support. You can always contact them at help at pushbutton.ai and they'll get you all sorted out. And on that, we're going to go on to the next segment. And I need to power up once again. It's funny, I switched to a standing desk. I was having some neck issues, um, and uh, luckily those all got sorted out. I'm feeling great now. But in that process of trying to get well, I switched to a standing desk. So these shows, I do standing. And you know what? It takes a lot more energy to deliver a one-hour show standing than it does sitting. I'll tell you that for sure. But, uh, but yeah, definitely better for my neck. That's, that is for sure. Um, and uh, let's do this. Getting all set. Got that. Fantastic. Got that over there. And we're going to get on to the next segment. Let's talk about a really popular and one of the most requested topics that we've been seeing. And that is, how do you use a YouTube channel or a video channel, whether you're talking about Instagram video, YouTube video, or any of the different video platforms, but how do you exploit those channels but do it faceless and sometimes even voiceless. Some people love to get on camera and they'll do content like this, like I'm standing here showing my face right here, right now, but that's not for everyone. Some people want to be able to use these platforms and make money with what's called a faceless YouTube channel. And that means you can make money with no camera and in some cases, no voice. And so let's dive into it. <clears throat> so let's dive into it. What we're going to cover today is how people are making thousands of dollars making YouTube shorts and long form content in a mixture. So this is one of the things that I want to cover is that the blend of how you set up your channel should be a blend of both short form, like the short little videos and long form content. And you can make these without using your face and without any camera at all. And there are several pages that have just blown up online. And whether they're doing it because they wanna monetize the YouTube Partner Program and make money from ads, or some people wanna do this to promote and grow their own business. I've even seen people doing this to promote their affiliate offers that they get commissions for. And let's look at a few pages that have just absolutely exploded without anyone needing to be on camera. Now, they're probably making thousands and tens of thousands a month, every single month with these strategies. So let's pull up some examples. I'll share my screen and uh, we'll show you some examples of this in use right now. Let me get the screen over here. So here's one here, 10X income, okay? So loaded with a bunch of videos. Look at this, 268,000 subscribers. They've only uploaded 24 videos to their channel. That's impressive. And they've got 268,000 subscribers. So let's take a look at their videos. What are they uploading? 
Well, let's take a look at this. In the last few months, I decided to focus more on selling digital products. And I've reached a point now where I'm making consistent income every month just by selling digital products online. So in today's video, I'll reveal the product that has made me over 10,000. So it's just a bunch of screen captures, but it's all voice. So let's take a look at another one. Let's go to this one. I spent $400 on an AI created business to see if we could make it successful or not. Starting with improving the product and hiring freelancers to create custom videos. And finally, test same thing. So just a little cartoon character on screen and a bunch of screen captures. That's it. So that's one example. Um, so uh, Social Blade here is a, an estimating system. We'll kind of estimate the traffic and revenue that channels are making. And it's, a, you know, it's not always super accurate, but what um, Social Blade is giving them a B ranking and they're saying that they're earning up to $32,000 a year from this channel. So that is pretty crazy, right? Here's an um, Instagram. Billionaire's Rule is the name of it. And check this out. None of this is original content. This is all, so let's take a look. You rich, number one, the psychology of money, number two, the intelligent investor, number three, rich. See that? There's nobody on here. There's not even a real human voice. It's AI voice. And this thing is blowing up. 175,000 followers. It's crazy, right? Here's another one. Just called quotes. It's a million subscribers with 120 video. All it is, is our quotes. Be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Bind together in what he says, both pleasure and applicability. See, that's it. Pretty darn cool, right? And uh, let's go on to. Okay. Oh, this is uh oh, this is the screenshot from um, Social Blade showing that they're making up to fifty thousand dollars a month on that on that uh, uh, channel on that uh, Instagram. Here's another one. Most amazing top ten. Seven point eight million subscribers. Same thing. None of this is original content. Number ten. Fingerprints. Your prints are so unique that Apple trusted them as a security. Einstein's last words. Albert, the Sumerians. The Sumer are the earliest hole. So they drilled the hole and decided to explore it. First. Buried on Oak Island in Nova Scotia. Well, what does look Multiple like? attempts have been made to dis Is there taking content, top 10 content from other places and reassembling it? Pretty crazy. Here's their social blade saying that they're doing up to $381,000 a year in revenue. Pretty awesome, right? So all this is doing um, is utilizing ways of making content um, that, that they don't have to be the voice. They don't have to be the face. And in some of these cases, they are quite literally using AI voices and AI generated faces to do the content and to cash in. Now, again, you can use this for promoting affiliate products. You can use this for promoting your own business. You can use this just to make money off of a faceless YouTube channel earning ad revenue. All of these things are viable and thousands of people are doing it right now and so can you. So let's go over some strategies of how you actually do this. And so I have several tactics on how you build videos like this, and we're gonna go through step-by-step step and I'll show you how you do it because this has been a common problem. I'm a big fan of YouTube and video and social media for ways to get traffic, but a lot of people are backed off and held back because they don't wanna use their own face or a little shy, they're not comfortable doing it, they don't even wanna use their own voice in some cases. And so now with these strategies that I'm about to show you, you can be winning with your own YouTube channel or Instagram or TikTok or any of the other places that you can put video or audio oriented content that you may not have been able to do before. So let's get into it. Now let's get my show notes going. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, my show notes are a little off trying to figure out what this is. Huh. Okay, bear with me for a moment here while I uh, sort out what the show notes are telling me. Hmm. All right, it might be in my teleprompter instead. So let's, uh, you guys get to see behind the scenes here while we sort out my show notes. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. Um, trying to speed through with my teleprompter to get to the bottom. Sorry, everybody. Hmm. Ah, my teleprompter's going haywire. Okay, I cannot find my notes. All right, I might have to come back and do this segment again. Okay, here we go. It's in, it is buried in my teleprompter. Okay, so we're going to restart here. So apologies to the live audience who watching me fumble around here, but, but, but I, I'm actually going to uh, go, go to my teleprompter here instead of my show notes and it'll, it'll walk me through. We're going to go through several methods um, that, um, that you can use to, to do this. Okay. So the first thing that you can do the first thing you can do is what's called clipping. And we're going to find popular long form YouTube content. Okay. Think podcasts, interviews, and things like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to clip them up and you're going to find the most important, impactful, most significant parts of this interview. And you're going to clip out 30 to 60 seconds of that interview. And then we're going to repurpose it and put it on our channel. And again, you're not trying to steal the content and make it look like it's yours, you're giving full credit for where it came from. And you're taking a small little segment out of a much larger piece of work and you're just resharing it on your content. Now, a power tool to do this is something called Opus Pro. Now it uses AI. You actually can literally point it at a YouTube video and it will use AI to find the most important parts of the video, the parts that are most likely to go viral. It'll then clean them up clip out small pieces of it, add captions to it, and it's immediately ready to go as a standalone unique piece of content. Now, it's an easy way to make a ton of short form videos. And you've probably seen this yourself. I know I see it all the time. I see Joe Rogan clips, or I'll see quotes from famous scientists or other people, experts uh, um, clipped up. Uh, and they might be business experts, like guys like Alex Hormozzi is somebody who's popular to do that with these days. Um, uh, Grant Cardone and any, anybody who's an expert who's doing interviews, just clip down into pieces, added captions, cleaned up and reposted to your own YouTube channel. And you can make a ton of these. And using Opus Pro, it's like mindlessly simple. Point it at the YouTube video, let it do its thing. It takes about 10 minutes and then pop out comes dozens of short form videos that you can then reuse to post on your channel channel and just one hour long piece of content can give you a dozen, two dozen different shorts that you could use on your channel. Now, the next method, we showed an example of that on screen, and that is the AI talking head method. So just like that channel, Billionaire's Rule, remember the page on Instagram with those funny faces? In fact, let's go back and find it. So that was this one, right? These funny faces? Well, these are done with off-the-shelf AI tools that we're going to show you in just a moment. So just like that Instagram page, many others are blowing up online using these AI talking heads, just like you saw there. Um, and so you can take a look at 
you know, the billionaire's rule as an example. And I find this method interesting because the whole workflow can be automated from the A to Z, the script, the voice, the art, the movement of that face, the entire workflow for the method goes like this. So step one, go to ChatGPT to create short scripts. Usually things like quotes, stories, facts, pieces of advice, etc. Now, some example prompts, which I'll be sharing with all my paying customers of pushbutton.ai. Here's some examples. Give me 10 fascinating facts about the universe that will blow your mind. In fact, let's try that one out here. Let me copy this. We will head it back to chat GPT. Start a new chat. We'll go to GPT-4, and I'm just going to paste that in. Give me 10, no, here. Give me 10 fascinating facts about the universe that will blow your mind. <laughs> well, I see you could do this in just about any topic, and there you go. And you have content, a script that can now be used on one of these you know, AI face videos. And there are a lot of prompts. Some example prompts could be, give me a compilation of fun and random trivia facts. Give me simple techniques for reducing stress or promoting relaxation. Give me interesting historical facts about famous landmarks or monuments. Give me 10 overviews of different philosophical schools of thought, right? Give me 10 thought provoking questions about X to ponder about, right? So you just go through and chat GPT gives you your script. Step two, you go to an AI image generator and produce the image of a relevant figure. So you saw in those examples of using those faces. So there are some ways to generate those faces and animate them so that they talk with AI. So you'll go into an AI image generator and produce the appropriate figure. So now if you're familiar with these tools, uh, we can use a tool like Dolly or Mid Journey. Um, and with my audience, I, I think some of you probably know these tools quite well. But if you don't yet know how to use Dolly or Mid Journey, let me know in the comments down below and I can do a future episode and show you how they work and how you use them. But there's several different a AI image generators where you could just literally go in, just like you see me do with ChatGPT, you can give it written instructions and it will create a picture or a portrait in this case. So you could say to make a portrait, you know, an oil painting style portrait of Albert Einstein, and it'll pop out and give you one of these images like you saw in that channel. Now, depending on what kind of niche you're in or what type of video you're doing, it, this could be a historical figure, a celebrity, it could be an, uh, you, somebody, you could just have it make up a picture of somebody. And uh, now we're going to use AI text to speech, right? So we don't want to read this in our own voice, so we're going to use AI text to speech to read the script out loud. And there's a lot of tools for that. You have 11 labs, you have play.ht, you have dubdub, well said labs. There's a whole host of tools out there that will convert text into AI voice and they sound phenomenal. So that is how you get the audio to use in these videos. Okay. And now I love 11 labs. It's especially interesting because you can clone voices. Like you can give it a sample of someone's voice. You know, so you've probably seen these videos of the presidents, you know, playing video games together, right? You ever seen those where you've got like Bill Clinton playing with Donald Trump and Barack Obama or Biden, you know, all playing a video game together? Well, that those are all obviously AI voices. Uh, and so you can also clone some of those famous characters if there is audio of it. Now, for example, there's a TikTok page that uses Saul Goodman, now, you know, the fictional character uh, uh, in Breaking Bad. And he reads the news uh, on TikTok using this tool. Um, now, let's see if I can find, I actually think I have it. Let's see, is that it? There, there it is. So here, let, let's, uh, let's watch Saul Goodman. On Tuesday, the Pentagon announced that Ukraine was provided with an additional $6.2 billion of US taxpayers' money. So there you go. Um, <laughs> so that's what we're going to be creating. And now we need to animate our figure. So we've got our picture that we've created with Dolly or Mid Journey or some of the other photo tools out there. And again, comment in the chat, comment on the comments if it's something you'd like me to cover more in depth in a future show. But they're pretty simple to use. 
and you get that spits out the portraits. You have a picture, right? Like a picture, for example, in this case, it's a picture of Saul Goodman that you start with. And then once you've got the picture, we're going to move on over and we're going to use a different tool. So we're going to use DID. Okay. So DID, if you haven't heard of that, is a tool that will take a picture of a person and it will animate it so it appears as though it's talking, just like the billionaire's rule that you saw on Instagram. And you take the figure that you generated with this and then you give DID the script. You, so they have the script with the audio and then it has the picture and it transforms it for you into a talking video. Done. You're ready to upload. And it's automated. These steps are all automated if you know how to use these tools. So let's take a look here. I think I've got DID up. There it is. Let's take a look. So with DID, again, you just simply upload your, your image. You obviously sign up. You can get a free trial. You sign up. You simply upload your image, and then it creates the conversational face. And there's lots of examples here. Chat.DID lets users talk with an AI. Really talk. No keyboards, no cursors, a face-to-face -face conversation. And so here's another DID's here. Creative Reality Studio just got even better. Now, as well as animating images from text or audio. Pretty awesome, right? So uh, anyway, this is what you can use to uh, animate those faces. And then you're off to the races. You just take that figure, put it into to DID along with the audio, out comes your video, and you're ready to upload it to your YouTube channel, to your Instagram, to TikTok, wherever it is. Now it is crazy the kind of stuff that is coming out in content with tools like this. It's just exploding. And the most important part is that people are making a lot of money doing this as I showed you earlier. So let's talk about the next method, the plug and play Canva templates. If you want short form content, Canva has video editing templates for different platforms, including TikTok, Instagram reels, and YouTube shorts. These are plug and play templates where you just have to switch out some of the stuff in there and you're golden, super easy. So step one, you go into Canva, find your favorite template. And let's see if I have something online I can show you. Well, there we go. Here are all these templates you see over on the left-hand side. And over here is the finished product. We can actually watch it here. So <laughs> these silly little pieces of content take off like crazy. I've seen this stuff go insanely viral when you get it right. And it's all based off these simple templates that are inside Canva. So you go in there, you pick a template that you like, you just switch out the assets. Maybe if you want a different color or a different image, change the text. If you're not sure what to write, go ask ChatGPT and it will tell you what to write. And Canva has a huge library of pictures, videos, sounds, and designs that you can add to this. And you make any other tweaks that you want and you're all done. You output it and boom. Now, as an example, we went ahead and spun the quick video that you saw on there. That actually was done in just a couple of minutes uh, and it was all done in Canva. And let's see, I think I, oh, actually here's one on YouTube. Let me share it with you. Um, Oh, actually, that's the next method. So hold on. So uh, note for editor, you can edit that out. Um, <laughs> and so all it took was less than five minutes and it was all done in Canva. Now, the next method, we're on to method four of how to make a faceless YouTube channel. And that is to turn pictures into shorts. So you can take a simple picture or a screenshot. And it's crazy how these are blowing up online right now. That's where you just take the content that is a just an image. It's just an image. You put background music to it and you transform it into, I'll use air quotes, into a video, right? So with this strategy, all you're doing is sharing the picture and that's all you have to do to become a YouTube content creator. Some of the pictures that include quotes, headlines, tweets, Reddit threads, memes, like if you see a funny photo meme or something, you can put that into a video. And all you do is use it your phone with Canva and uh, also you can use CapCut. It's a free video editing app right on your phone. You just open up your phone, grab CapCut in the app library, just Cap, C-A-P, Cut, C-U-T. 
And you could just screenshot something that you find interesting, dump it into the video editing app, app throw music on it, and you're done. That I'm going to show you one right now that was made in just a couple of minutes. And um, let me just show it now. I'll, I'll show you what it, exactly what it is. That's it. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? The thing is, content just like that is going insanely viral, in some cases getting millions of views. Now, for that one, all he did was go to Twitter, found the tweet from Alex Hormozy, cropped it on his phone, recorded a quick little video with, with audio, um, and then he found a city background. I think that was in Canva's library. So that background of the city came from Canva, and he threw it all together in Canva and then saved it and was done. And... Uh, that's quite simple, right? You think you could actually just take a screenshot and do that, upload it into Canva, click, 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 and then output a video. That's it, it is that simple. Before I move on to our final method, I gotta warn you, there are some things that you wanna avoid in your content, okay? So you don't wanna do stuff that's gonna get you in trouble or put your account at risk, or you don't wanna do anything that's just not cool and not ethical. So you wanna make sure that you don't get penalized, you don't get banned, and you don't spam, okay? Now, these strategies obviously make video creation easy. And I've seen people go overboard where they'll upload videos every hour. <laughs> boom, 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 all, we, all day long. And that's spammy, I'm sorry, you don't wanna do that. And it can get you banned or demonetized. So YouTube does not like people throwing up mass volumes of short form content on the platform of this type. So now if you're putting content out a few times a day, that's cool. And you also don't want it to be junk. You want you do want the content to be something that someone would find interesting or entertaining or useful in some way. And you don't want to overdo it. And any content where you're using AI voiceover, you're gonna wanna use good quality AI voiceovers. There's a lot of tools out there that are just garbage and they sound horrible. They sound like AI, right? You don't want it to sound like Siri. You don't want it to sound where it's really obvious that it's AI. Use AI voiceover tools, which I told you about earlier in this video. And things like Eleven Labs, for example, are great for this kind of good quality stuff. Or if you're uncomfortable with that, you can always just record your own voice. Just pop open the microphone, talk into it. And you don't have to show your face, but you could also record your own voice if you want. So when you have fake, obvious AI, yeah, they don't perform as well. And you also don't want people suspicious of what you're trying to do. So remember also, you must provide value. You must provide value, not just mass produced garbage. So these rules are very similar to what Google wants. Google wants good quality content that people get entertainment or value out of in some way. And you're allowed to use AI and automation to your heart's content as long as you're providing value. And that's all you have to do. Now, remember, you don't wanna put out fake information. So no, no, no fake news or false information. So make sure you're putting out relevant, true, factual information and uh, don't make things up, okay? And don't let your AI make them up either because sometimes that can happen. Now, the final method is a completely automated video from Pictory. And I've seen some channels absolutely blow up to millions of subscribers and making tons of money using this tool. It's a tool called Pictory. It's pretty cool because it will generate videos for you and they'll match the script you give it. So it does take a little time. You upload your script, you can upload audio, and then it will turn this into, they take a bunch of what's called B-roll, right? Of different kind of videos and images. And they create kind of like this cool little uh, video and Pictory, and Pictory will just fill it up, fill up the whole video with relevant pictures and B-roll footage. Um, and then, you record yourself if you wanna do your own voice or you upload your AI voice to do it. Um, and this is something that is, is really simple to do. And uh, you can use this. I may have an example I can show you. Let me see if I've got, there's Pictory, I'll pull Pictory up. So here's Pictory and you can make great looking videos pretty easily with it. Let me see if there is an example of one. Is this one, of, that's not an example. Um, yeah, just, okay. I thought I should be able to show you an example, but Pictory is a really cool tool and it will create videos of high quality 
that uh, I've seen video uh, channels using that have been blowing up into the millions of subscribers with Pictory. Now, with any of these five methods, you can go out and get started right now. You could start on this today. And before you go to bed tonight, you can have your first batch of YouTube shorts and long form content queued up and ready to start your new channel. Now, one thing I wanna tell you is this is not an overnight thing. So don't expect to upload a handful of videos and in your first two or three days, like you're gonna suddenly take off and catch on fire and you know become the next you know viral TikTok. Uh, uh, it's just not gonna happen. It takes consistency. So with any kind of social type content, whether it's video content on YouTube, whether it's TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you're putting your content, Twitter, same thing. It's going to take consistency and any organic kind of social content like this will take you putting the content out there for a long period of time. Don't expect overnight success. It can happen, sure, but it's more likely to take you months before your channel takes off and then you begin getting traffic. So don't throw in the towel too early. You got to stick with this to make it work. The next chapter, the next segment we're going to cover is pretty cool. And uh, I'm going to do a final power up here. And we're going to get into it. So <clears throat> in this segment, uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be sharing a bunch of stuff here that I, I think you'll find very, very, very interesting. OK, let me get that there. And back there. And we're going to get started. <clears throat> Let's talk about how to sell without a product. I'm going to show you five billion dollar companies that actually sold and made money before they actually built their product. It's a strategy that I have used myself time and time again, where I sell early versions of my products or pre-sell them before they're even created. I'll explain more about that in a little bit. I've made literally millions of dollars myself doing that. I'll explain how I did it at the end. But what I want to do first is show you five examples of massive multi-billion dollar companies, household name companies that started selling before they actually had any kind of decent product. And in some cases, before they had any kind of product at all. And the key to success here, not just in business, but in life, is that you want to just get started. And these companies and myself, I don't let stuff like overcomplicating and overthinking and becoming a perfectionist stop me from moving forward. I've seen so many people that are aspiring for success and they just become perfectionists and they never get started. And people who take forever to actually get started is ultimately often because they're afraid they're going to fail. So you have to park that off to the side and you just have to start. Truth is, it's just perfectly okay to start out with something that's bad. And in most cases, most new businesses, most new products start out bad. <laughs> just the truth. It's even okay to sell something before it's ever built or before it exists. Wanting to launch the perfect product stops people before, before you ever get started and you never end up pursuing your dreams. It's actually far more important to sell a rough, unfinished product that gets to the market and gets the bare minimum job done. Now, I'm not saying you want to mislead people or tell people the product is something awesome before it's up to par. You need to be transparent and be honest and be ethical, but you can start your business before it's perfect. And most great businesses started just like that. Then you adjust, you learn, you gradually build up to become the perfect product, the one that you have in your dreams. So don't wait to make that perfect product that's in your head and in your dreams. That doesn't have to be reality before you start. So you may be skeptical. Let me show you some examples. The following, I'm gonna show you some screenshots. They're pictures of the early versions of common household businesses that you'll probably recognize eventually. I'll spill the beans and show you who they are, but they're the first versions of these businesses. Every one has gone on to become a multi-billion dollar empire, okay? So let me do this. I'm gonna share my screen again, and I'm gonna show you these examples. 
let me pull the screen around here. Now, maybe you recognize this one. Can you guess what it is? Let me know in the comments. What, what business do you think this is? It started off, you couldn't even pay them when they launched. They had no way to accept payments. They actually helped you rent a house, but you'd actually have to go to the house and pay in cash. That's how they started. You couldn't pay online, no way to do it. You had to show up and pay in cash. They had no way to search a map. You couldn't search by zip code and look in and zoom and try to figure out where the house is you want to rent. Now, before they were profitable, you know how they funded themselves? Do you know how Airbnb, I let the cat out of the bag, got started by personal credit card debt. So they launched this business using their own personal credit card debt to get started. And before they were profitable, they actually ended up having to sell cereal. <laughs> Check this out. To keep funding Airbnb, to keep it alive, the founders had to go out and start a cereal business. That's right. That's how they financed the operation. And Airbnb is now worth $80 billion. Right, we can see here. <laughs> Airbnb funded their startup with cereal boxes. And at the time of this, it's now worth $80 billion. And let's look here. Okay, we're going to get to that one in a second. But uh, there we go. So let's see. Several of you guessed it. It's, uh, yeah, several of you guessed the right answer. Now, as I said, they started off of debt on their personal credit cards. They launched a website that didn't accept payments, that didn't have effective search. They couldn't search even a map. They couldn't even display a map on their website. You had to go to the, the house and meet somebody in person and pay in cash. And they're now an $80 billion tech business that is you know, obviously made billionaires uh, by doing that. So they're a prime example of why you need to just get launched. Do not wait, launch your business, even if it looks like that. Now, the next one, I'm going to have to tell you a little backstory. The next one might be a little bit harder to guess because they actually changed their name after they launched. So uh, I want to see if you guys can guess this one. Let's go back to here. Here we go. Okay. So this, anybody know what this is now? Can anybody guess? Let me know in the comments if you can guess what this is. Now, when it looked this way, it really had only two things. It had two features. It had this low resolution, grainy live stream video of the founder of the company named Justin and a chat. That's it. This is all it was. It's just him, just that guy live streaming and a chat panel over there on the, on the right side. Now, this business has over 2 million viewers at any time across thousands of different live streaming people that are watching thousands of different streamers and over 2 million concurrent viewers at any moment. Now this site was acquired eventually and turned and actually they got they were bought for a billion dollars and it all started with this ugly pixely live stream of just some average ordinary guy. Anybody actually I'm looking in the comments now nobody's guessed it yet. So um here with the live audience no one has yet guessed what this titan of an internet business is. I'll give you a moment more. Anybody guess? No? It's Twitch. You know what Twitch is? Live streaming platform. The biggest live streaming platform on the internet. Filled a lot of people are on there streaming video games. And uh, there's also people just streaming, you know, like I do, like I'm doing right now. But yeah, 2 million simultaneous viewers. You know, think about that. They, they outpace network television by quite a lot. Um, and they're just started out just like that with a grainy little uh, video and chat panel. So yeah, that was Twitch. They were bought by Amazon for a billion dollars. Pretty cool, right?
Oh my gosh, did I make it back? Wow, okay, stand by everyone. That was crazy. Okay, looks like I'm back. Wow, my computer just decided to just reboot itself right in the middle of the stream. Uh, so it is a little hot in here, so that might have something to do with it. But uh, so much for my, you know, multi-billion dollar gaming PC just decided to uh, crap out right in the middle of the stream. So uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out, those of you who are still with us live. I see it looks like we've lost a couple of you, but uh, I am back and we will continue where we left off. All right, let me just get my screen sharing going again. And we want to share our entire screen and audio and there and boom. All right. Okay, you guys ready to guess the next multi-billion dollar business? <laughs> it's pretty shocking. Um, let me see if my teleprompter is still on. It is, okay. All right. <clears throat> now, the next one is shocking. It started way back in 1994. There it is. Isn't that ugly? Now, in 1994, this business was famously launched out of a garage. The founder decided to leave a well-paid job. He was a Wall Street investment banker, left his job, and the first clue is, he left his job to launch an online bookstore. He saw the writing on the wall with how powerful the internet is going to be. This is way back, or this is early, early, early. And he knew that the internet was going to be powerful. And uh, he knew that he would be better off putting it all in. He went, he went all in and bet everything on his online bookstore. And people thought he was crazy. He left a pedigreed Wall Street job making a lot of money. And everybody said he was nuts. And so after making a basic website with a bunch of book listings, they went live. That was the whole business. Some of you got it. I see some of you in the chat guessing, and some of you know what this one is. But uh, if you haven't yet guessed, guess in the comments or in the chat, which uh, what is this? What business is this? Now, check this out. You guys have probably all heard of drop shipping, right? So drop shipping is when you don't have a product. You, you don't have anything in your hand and you take orders from people, right? So someone buys the product and then you got to call the manufacturer and the manufacturer then ships it directly to the person who bought it from you. It never, it never touches your hands, right? That's called drop shipping, right? So customer buys it on your website and then you work with a supplier or fulfillment house or a manufacturer and they ship for you direct to the customer. It's called drop shipping. Very popular e-commerce model for people who want to get started building their first e-commerce business. Guess what? Amazon started as a drop shipping site. No joke. When someone bought a book on that site, they ordered it from the distributor. So someone bought a book, he had to call up the distributor and ask him to ship the book to the customer. Crazy, right? So you had to go on this website, buy the book, and then he had to call the distributor and ask him to ship it. Now, he went online, and within a month, he was doing $20,000 in sales every week with this. With this surge in book orders, he would list more books. So the more money he made, the more books that he lists. And now years later, this company is worth over a trillion dollars. Now, you probably know what this company is by now, but it started off with this ugly website that drop shipped books to its customers. It goes to show you getting started can get you far. This guy went to $20,000 a week with this and went on to have a trillion dollar business. A little trivia before I spill the beans. They almost launched under a brand name of Cadabra. Like their company was going to be called Cadabra Inc. But then people, he asked around, asked some of his friends, and people told him it sounded like Cadaver. So he ended up with Amazon. So that is the story of Amazon. Now you can see plainly right there 
Did Jeff Bezos become a perfectionist? Did he wait until he had a perfect business going? He didn't even have products to sell. He didn't have any physical inventory or books that he could sell to anyone. And he had an ugly website. He got started and now made a company worth a trillion dollars. Crazy, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Our next example started back in 2009, and it was ugly, I guess, to say it lightly. Let's take a look. So that was their first version. Everyone's private driver, on-demand car service by a phone and SMS. Join for free, right? Now, anybody guess what this one is? What company is this one? Now, like all the others, it started off clunky, ugly, unsophisticated, and you actually had to text your address to the company. So if you wanted to get a car from this company, you would have to text them on the phone, like open up SMS, text your, what, where you were at, give them your address, and then they would drive over to where you were at. And, uh, and, and that's how you got your car. Now, famously, people had to actually email the founder. So if you wanted to sign up, it actually sent an email to the founder of the business and he had to manually set you up if you wanted to get an account. Now, this company went public in 2019. At that time, they reported over 90 million monthly viewers at their filing with the, the Securities and Exchange Commission when they went public. Now, they've grown, grown and have become much bigger since then, but 90 million monthly paying users. Now, when you're just starting out, less is always more. Take one core feature and focus on testing and validating that concept. Keep it simple, keep it small, get it launched. And now this business is worth $80 billion. Did you guess what it is? I see, I see a bunch of you guessed it right. Yep, this was Uber. So imagine, in order to use Uber, you couldn't just order a car on your app. You had to text them your address. So you're texting them your address, saying, hey, I need a car. Here's where I am. And then wait for them to drive to you after that. And uh, there was no app. There was no search. There was all the features that you know of Uber just didn't exist. And they launched anyway. They didn't wait to perfect it. They didn't wait to make it cool. They just got it out there and they got started. And now they're worth $80 billion. So let's take a look at the next one. Get it to load up there. There we go. Can you guess what this one is? Let me I'll put it in there right now. So pop in the chat, in the comments. Let me know what your guess is before I describe this business. What business is this? Who, who, who is this? I'll, I'm, I'm waiting with the live audience here now. I'm going to wait to see for the live audience if they can guess what this business is in. Try and guess it. Now, back in the day when they were brand new, they started off as an internal messaging tool for podcast publishers, right? So this was a company called Odeo back in 2006. So Odeo built this as a tool to message back and forth internally within businesses. Now, the the tool was a hit with their employees, so the founders decided to take it to the public. Now, this ugly website right here saw 20,000 messages a day the first month they went public. Then look at this. It's ugly. And now the kind of famous found, uh, owner of the, the business took it over and uh, final clue he somewhat controversially bought it for $44 billion. Anybody guess now? It's Twitter. That's right. So <laughs> Twitter is, uh, obviously it was bought for $44 billion. There's a lot of controversy around it and how much it was worth and if he overpaid and all of that stuff. But I want you to know that all of these launches, the reason I'm showing them to you is that every one of these had what we call a minimum viable product, an MVP. So it's the product with core features and nothing more. And often the core features don't work well. They're buggy and they're clunky and they're not exciting or anything like that. 
They're usually ugly and they're often worse than their competitors. In the case where these companies had competitors, their option, their version was worse, had not as good functionality. It didn't look as good. And they got out fast though. So because of that uh, mind frame of getting to market fast and getting launched, they ultimately won and became huge multi-billion dollar companies. And so that's a big lesson uh, at the end of the day. Now I coach a lot of entrepreneurs that many of them are just getting started at the beginning. And one of the things that I really notice a lot of people get stuck on is the getting started part. And often being perfectionists on getting the colors just right, or the logo just right, or the design just right, or the words just right, or any element of their business. And it keeps getting postponed and delayed. And often they're like, well, I don't know how to do X, so I'm gonna wait until I learn X and then I'll launch. And then it's you know one thing after another. And then I, I'm not kidding, I know entrepreneurs that I've been working with that have been stuck in this state for years paralyzed by wanting to overthink, overdo, overperfect before they ever get a product to market. And you need to get your product to market and you need to get traffic flowing to your website so that you can measure to see if people are even interested in the first place. Then you improve and you do improvements one step at a time. And this is how I've launched several million dollar product lines using just this method by launching with a prototype and then improving it and improving it and polishing it and making it better over time. It's a great way to do it. And uh, that leads us into our next segment that I'm gonna talk about. And one of the last things I wanna say before we move on is that push button AI, I built it to solve this problem. So many people wanna start their first online business or they wanna use uh, the internet to drive traffic to their existing business. And they get frozen in this thing where they don't understand technology, they want to make it good, and they get stuck in this sort of zone of paralysis where they don't ever really get started. And so Push Button AI was created to solve this problem so that you can log in with an idea, push a button, and then come back later in the day and you have an entire fully fledged business created, launched, domain name registered, all the tech and hosting set up, 30 days of email, uh, you know everything you need to build a business done for you by artificial intelligence. And it helps shortcut and get you launched so you can start getting traffic and you can take what the AI gives you and improve it and polish it and tweak it and make it better and better and better. And it allows you to get your MVP out the door so that you can get the public to come view it and start buying from you. And so if you're interested in becoming a customer, you should check out pushbutton.ai. Yeah, right now, we are not open to the public at the time of this video, but we are accepting early access members by invitation only. So you can request an appointment to try to find out if you qualify. Details are on the website. Or you can text us, which I'll put more info about that uh, on this video as well. All right, so we're going to move to the next segment. And of course, my teleprompter battery died. So I don't have my teleprompter for our our final segment. Let's see if I can get over to it. Okay. And I don't have it in my show notes for some reason. Let's see if I have it in my teleprompter screen. Let's go over here, some more show notes, teleprompter script. There it is, okay. Okay, so this one I'm gonna have to read from the screen, but I do think I have at least a, ah, there we go, okay. <clears throat> So let me just pull this over here. All right, guys. So uh, with all of our tech problems today, it's been a little clunky, but uh, here we go. We're going to do the next segment. Mm. 
So you often hear me talking about how you need to get your product launched and out on the market. And so what I'd like to do now is show you an example of how one company got 140,000 users selling their first product that didn't even exist. They didn't even have a product. All they had was an idea. And they took that and they went to market and launched a killer business. Now, there are people going around right now launching seven, eight, and even nine figure companies. And they're launching before they've got a product on the market. And in the example I'm gonna give you, it shows the formula of how to sell now and build later. Now with this example, it's a tool called Buffer. And, and Buffer ha actually helps you schedule your social media posts. It's a pretty popular tool. And so like, if you wanna post on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and you're trying to time it all out and manage it all, Buffer can do that for you. Now it was launched and the founder wanted to make sure that the tool had a lot of demand before he started selling it. And so what he did is I'll, I'll show you what the screen looked like. There we go. That was his launch. The product didn't exist. It was merely an idea. And so he showed his proposed pricing structure. And then he had a place where you could sign up for their release, right? For their launch. And that was it. He launched. And uh, he put all of his resources into launching with this as a massive survey. And he drove traffic. He drove traffic, got the signups. And when he saw that this was a viable business, he then began building the product. He gauged interest in the idea. And then the results of people being willing to sign up and subscribe right here, which is this minimum information, was all he needed to turn it into a massive business. So uh, then he went through a series of improvements as time went on. And he saw, then he started charging money ahead of time. So he started here. Then he did pre-sales where he actually collected money before the product was for sale. Now it's a major social media tool. They have over 140,000 paying customers and it's a standard launch model. This model has worked for several billion dollar companies. Dropbox, you've probably heard of Dropbox when it launched, it didn't have the technology built yet. Their first minimum viable product was just a video. They had a, they had a video mock-up of going, hey, look, this is what it would look like if we built it, right? And it wasn't built yet. Now it's worth over a billion dollars. So you can apply this same strategy by selling a product, whether it's a course, an ebook, a physical product, whatever it might be. You can sell it first and then fulfill it. Now, one of the classic ways to do this is on an information uh, product, like what we teach in Push Button AI, what Push Button AI builds for you and what I often teach my entrepreneurs what to do is to tr start with an info business. And you can pre-sell access to a course or a training or anything that hasn't been released yet, or you can sell a course or a training that's like a minimal, like the, the basic first version, and then they're gonna get ongoing monthly support from you over time is another way to do it. The beauty of our tool Push Button AI is that you can launch the minimum viable product, sell that with the promise of longer term improvements and help uh, on, on an ongoing basis. And that's how you can often get your business started, just like Buffer did. So Buffer started by collecting email addresses to judge interest. Then they moved on to pre-selling where they sold access before the tool was launched. And then finally they launched it and scaled out their full business. That was the steps that they went through. And so I highly encourage you to be thinking out of the box of how do you get your product out there fast? That is probably the most important rule of success is to launch and launch fast. Then next comes persistence and you have to stick with it, per improve, tweak, polish, get better and better over time and stay consistent, stay persistent and you will win and you can become a successful entrepreneur too. These are examples of people that went on to make billions of dollars with these strategies. So don't let, you know, trying to get it perfect hold you back. And then let me see if I have any other notes here to cover. Oh, final thing I'll say on this is there's an entire business built around this idea. Kickstarter, for example, or GoFundMe and, and all the other sites like that that are, you know, kickstart uh, launches, you know, where they're selling a product before it exists. 
So as long as you're transparent with your buyers and you're transparent with the customers as the process goes along, just keep them informed and be honest and be ethical and you can sell your product before it exists or when it's an early state and it's just gonna be improved and get better and better over time. So what do you say? Are you ready to get started? And of course, you can always use pushbutton.ai to launch your business in a day. That's right, with pushbutton AI, you can log in, the AI is gonna ask you some questions, you hit a button, and then it goes to work building your entire business for you while you wait. And then it will hand it to you on a silver platter, hand you the keys, whichever analogy you, can, you wanna go with, and then you can get started and get to launch quickly. Now, Push Button AI is not available to the public. It's by invite only. You could go to the website and find out more, or you can text us to find out if you qualify to be part of our early beta users. And uh, with that, we've been on a long time today. So um, I don't know, uh, Nick, if you can you come on mic? No, I don't seem to hear you. Okay, maybe we don't have Nick on mic for some reason. Okay, well, well, then we can't do questions. So I was going to see if Nick could take a few questions, but uh, um, I think uh, at this point we're going to wrap things up. So I do want to remind all of our Push Button AI customers that these segments are going to be edited up and released. Uh, some of them will be members-only exclusives where you're going to get all the AI prompts that I used in the, uh, in my demos, you'll get links to all the resources, uh, transcription, and any downloadable guides or other materials that we're going to be providing for you. Those are all members-only benefits of pushbutton.ai. And, uh, and by the way, all of you who are paying customers, our new members area is launched, and you can log in at pushbutton.ai, talking about improving and polishing the product over time. You can now go to pushbutton.ai, log into your all new members area experience and you'll get to see you can start building your sites there now instead of going to some of our other places like job crusher um, so just head to pushbutton.ai log in there with your normal username and password and you can learn more about how it works over there for those of you who are customers so the new members experience is launched it is live and you can access it at pushbutton.ai okay great awesome well, I am glad you guys appreciate seeing some nice feedback in the chat. So thank you, everybody, who persisted through our tech problems again today. And uh, hopefully my computer will not restart next time we are live. But we'll be here every week, and I'll be back for more training with you next week. Now, before you go, subscribe down below. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and do all that stuff. Help the YouTube algorithm realize that my brand new channel here is worth showing to other people people. So uh, yeah, we're going to talk quite a lot about, I'm going to give you some behind the scenes as I grow this new channel of mine. So it's something that uh, my old channel, um, we actually got locked out of and can't log into it. So I had to start a brand new YouTube channel and uh, we're growing it from scratch basically. And uh, so I'm going to share some behind the scenes info with you guys as this progresses and as the channel gets bigger right now, we're just it's like in, we're in the baby steps mode of getting this thing kicked off and getting started. But we will be back next week. Make sure you subscribe. And uh, on that note, I'm going to head out of here. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.